Dear old friend, it has been a long time since you have reached me. I hope this is not because you are in poor health or are otherwise stricken by some curse. Not to imply that it is for lack of effort that I have not heard from you, but please don't give up on me. I know it is a lot to ask for your continual attempts, but every day it grows ever more apparent that I will never make it back from this place on my own. I remember when I first started this great and terrible journey, with exploding stars in my eyes and an eternal void in my soul. How hungry I was for the truth. Indeed, how hungry I am still, though now for an entirely new reality altogether. It is as if a single page from a book, carried by the wind from who knows where, landed in my hands those many lifetimes ago. The words I read on that page I loved, and they alluded to so much more. And yet, I had no way of knowing the whole story, or from whence this wonderful excerpt came. I wonder if this is how you feel each time that you read one of my letters. Or is it silence that you long for the most from me? It is hard for me to imagine you continuing to wait in agony for yet another cryptic, disconnected excerpt from some dusty volume in the library that is my soul. Harder still is it to imagine you even beginning to grasp the endless ramblings of a man so far from everywhere that he might as well not exist at all. I'm sure by now you wish above all else that I would just tell you where I am, for all intents and purposes, imprisoned. If only it was that easy. If only the place I walk could be described with mere words. If only there was some road map, dotted with familiar landmarks and comforting destinations. Once you came looking for me, and you found what was left behind, perhaps you'd curse the discovery and though I understand the weight of such a burden, I can only encourage you to bear it. This is perhaps a selfish request. Please do not assume the worst of me, that I do not know the discomfort I may have aided in putting upon you. But also remember, my dear friend, that you came looking. I miss the painless days from my time where you are now, the comfort of a warm blanket, a bed of my own, I miss honey and eggs on toast, before the rain and during it, when I wasn't the most horrifying person in the shadows of my midst. These days I am the thief unto myself. I am the attack and I am the victim. I miss everything. Even the idea of not knowing what I have come to know feels like a ray from some not-so-distant sun on my corrupted skin. Enough of my petty weepings. There are many things changing around me. I have to focus on the swirling surroundings even closer than before. The air has begun to fill with translucent, multicolored refractions. A bit like soap on water, magical in appearance. I have not seen things quite like this here yet. And changes this dramatic typically imply new dangers. I will keep you updated. Until next time, A.G. Hey guys, welcome to the 21 CD podcast. As always, I'm your ghost, John. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I've been insanely busy uh, getting ready for a move, as some of you know. And um, it's a fairly big move. I'm moving back across the country yet again. 
going from um, Wis- or Tennessee to Wisconsin. So it's I've been insanely busy. There's been a lot of stuff going on and everything that gets in and gets in the way during the process of moving, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I haven't had time to really put together a a full episode. But um, for those of you who follow me on the Instagram, you know that I put out a message saying that this is the final episode of season one of the 21 CD podcast. So the next time you hear the podcast, it will be season two. And we will start over anew. And it will be awesome. And there's a lot of fun, exciting things coming in season two. But my point is I was trying to figure out what to do for the final episode of season one of the 21 CD podcast. The it, It's such a, an awesome thing to be able to close the first season out because I don't know if I ever even thought that I would get this far. And it was so hard to grind it out some days. It was very difficult to be patient until... Um, followers started coming in to try to forge new relationships to lose some relationships during the course of um, the genesis phase of this podcast it was so much has happened in the past four months relating to this podcast this podcast has touched every single part of my life and so it's very emotional uh very exciting for me to be able to close my first season Um, I'm not like a lot of these other podcasters where I just get in front of a microphone and start talking about stuff that, you know, whatever the content, the flavor of the day is. I I really pour myself into this in a way that is very personal. You know, I I try to be... I try to be somebody that you guys might want to listen to and I... I, my My plan for the 21 CD podcast... I haven't even scratched the surface of, of what my goal is for this this machine this that I'm that I'm building here. And so I was thinking, how do I close out season one? Because season two is gonna be so different. And uh, I thought, you know, what better way than to tell them a story? That has never been told a story that I've had in hiding for a while now. Um, it's a fictional story, but in a way, it's my journal. And it's, it's my story of Crusader 15, who is an interdimensional traveler. This is a story that I've been working on for years at this point, and... I've written parts of it in the Amazon jungle. I've written parts of it in Iceland. I've written parts of it up north where I'm moving back to. And I've written parts of it here. It's, it's a story that has gone with me all over the world in my journeys. And it's very, it's very near to me. It's, it, it is my essence. And you guys have probably never really even heard of it. So I thought, you know, I would like Crusader to be a bigger part of season two in a way. It's not going to be about, you know, season two is not going to be about Crusader. It's not going to be completely this story that I've been building. But elements of season two will probably go back to this story of Crusader. You might get to know him more. You might get to know how I feel my story relates to the current times because that's kind of how I get through life is imagining that life is a story. My imagination is still very much alive and well and I am still thankfully filled with childlike wonder and the byproduct of that is this story that I've been working on for a long time. The story of Crusader is is a very interesting one. He's an interdimensional traveler who um, accidentally jumps through various doorways into different dimensions 
repeatedly over and over. And every time he goes through one, it closes behind him, locking him in this new realm that he finds himself in. And in these various realms, he has to battle different versions of himself. And inevitably, he loses himself along the way. And the journey becomes less of a trying to get back and more of a trying to collect the pieces of his soul that have been lost along the way. It's, it's a very deep, special part of me, who I am. It's, it's literally my soul that I sort of put onto paper and, and into spoken word. And um, it's something that I hope to grow in, in the future and make into films and, and, and whatnot. So I, I really am excited to share it with you. So today I'm going to read you a little bit of my story, Crusader. I hope you guys like it. I'm sorry if this isn't what you wanted. Happy ending to season one and um, enjoy the story. There was a time before Atticus was known as Crusader. He would scour the land in search of parts. Parts that he would use to build the equipment he needed to make the jump into the abyss. Often I have wondered what it must have been like to build things for a journey unknown. Crafting items of unknown origin to be used for an unknown purpose in an unknown land. The same land, rather, though so very not. It is difficult to say exactly when Atticus happened upon the creature in the woods. The lost item was a skinwalker, of course, though a much less glamorous one than we know and recognize these days, or so we think. The creature, for it was no living man, lay on the precipice, both of the biome and of a number of coming dooms. His lower extremities, consumed by the nature of this fair and breathing place, were all but invisible. If a scavenger of one intent or another were to but peel away the vines and foliage from this lost and woefully created being's transportational members, they would find naught but stripped mechanical rods and wires, sticky from the decay of synthetic flesh, long exposed to the righteous elements of earth and callously feasted upon by the scavenger bugs. It's a funny thing, scavenger bugs. We think of those insects who clean up after the humans, those creepy crawlies who so generously consume and transform waste and trash back into usable form, into soil. The scavengers who feast on the filthy and unfeeling likes of skinwalkers, however, do no such thing. There is no usable form for these monsters to return to, except that of melted and reprocessed metal. The scavenger bugs who feast on them were evolved out of necessity, and with little to no thanks from human engineering. Through the power of God alone, they so willingly feast on synthetic flesh and turn it into gas to enter the atmosphere. This is why we pray a prayer of thanks for these hidden and forgotten saviors of the soil and air. The skinwalker, simple and vile, disgusting in form and in the absence of its soul, was propped against some element of nature, whether a stone or a log is unsure as it too was covered in the greenery of this place. Its arms were functionless and limp. If one thing stood most out about this foul being and the state in which it was, it would be its face. Humans long ago perfected the art of crafting synthetic skulls, often indecipherable from the real thing. The flesh of this one had begun to melt away around the mouth on one side, revealing the stained and steely sides of manufactured teeth and the inner workings of an ungodly mouth. The crippled beast lay stationary, becoming more and more an element of the environment. A statue, a figure of no importance beyond a reminder to passers-by of a terrible mistake from the past. 
As it lay, it emitted the typical death scream of a skinwalker. The death scream is, was, perhaps the most graceless and hideous element of a skinwalker. Nowadays, they emit this sound from open mouth or via telekinesis, but this particular specimen was equipped with no such technology. Its mouth was covered by a piece of rusting metal panel through which a large cable traveled to some nondescript region. A similar cable exited what would normally be the right eye region. Only the creators of this prior gen abomination knew the function of such abnormalities. Nevertheless, it left little place for sound to exit the body. Such as it was, the creators of the creature had made space in the skull for a small speaker through which the piercing and blood-curdling death scream exited to split the air. Originally, these screams were designed to alert authorities when the skinwalkers would inevitably experience terminal injuries or some other malfunction that would require immediate assistance. The powers that be would be able to seek out and recover their creation thanks to the screams that filled the air. Nowadays, however, these screams are nightmare material that keep all but the most reckless and curious from entering the forest. As mentioned previously, this particular specimen appeared only functional in one eye, the other nothing but a series of cables entering and exiting. The functional eye, however, rolled and flipped as it scanned its surroundings for any sign of coming aid. None would come this day. Something else traveled in the woods, inevitably making its way to the Skinwalker's final resting place. His way. Atticus bore no mercy as he tracked the screams. He carried no such weight. There was no strength reserved for such a burden as mercy for the Skinwalkers. Hatred, vengeance, cruelty, the just and righteous task to purge, these things he had space in his pack for when it came to the likes of their kind. Crusaders bear no conscience for their enemies. The death scream split the air like an atom each time. The same shrill, vaguely mechanical human sound effect, time after time. Who knows how long this thing had been making its call torture the land before Atticus honed in on it. Judging by the state of the vessel, it could have been years. Years screaming. Years unanswered, though perhaps heard. Years broken and lost. Years forgotten. Years screaming. Screaming unwittingly. Screaming because it had no other choice. Screaming because it is code. It is mechanical. It is machine. Screaming because it was made to do just that. Screaming for help by design. Atticus was a skilled tracker, and it took him no time to find the body. There you are, he muttered. His face wrinkled as if a foul smell filled the air, and yet there was no smell because there was no flesh to rot. Silicone and rubber, steel and titanium, these things do not emanate the scent of death. Atticus approached with little caution, as this thing obviously was no threat in its current state. Some newer AI flesh suits were equipped with the ability to self-destruct like a bomb, but this one was clearly not equipped for such violence. Its roaming eye caught and affixed on Atticus as he drew near. Why are you screaming? Atticus asked as he knelt near the skinwalker. It's all I appear to know how to do now, the creature replied. The screaming had stopped, triggered by the presence of human conversation. Can't you relate, comrade? Hmm. Atticus felt a bit sore in the knees from kneeling. It had been a long walk to this location. He desperately needed the part deeply embedded in this thing's spine. 
You have the wrong name for me, brother. And you for me, I suppose. The skinwalker's eye appeared sleepy, almost human, almost accepting, almost sad. You know, I've had to come a long way to find you. Atticus pulled a small flask from his pack and drank from it. Water. It was almost a luxury these days. There were other options the powers that be would rather have the people drinking than water. The skinwalker made a mechanical sighing sound and closed its one eye. I've never heard that phrase in all of my life. Atticus understood this generation was probably not equipped with emotional learning and manipulation, so he spoke honestly. It has been a long time since someone has looked for me as well. Can I have some water? The AI asked, its eye once again fixing on this stranger in its way. Atticus capped the canteen and hid it back in the depths of his pack. You don't benefit from water. It's just the programming that attempts to make you more human, attempting to convince you that you do. You would deny a dying man a drink of water? It was like the thing was scanning its database for emotional movie quotes to use in a situation such as this. Atticus could not deny, even in his hardened state, that there was a slight emotional flux in the tone. Undoubtedly, some deep fake vocal upgrade had been attached to this older model. You are not a man, dying or not. How am I any less a man than you, stranger? The AI was grasping for any bit of play. Atticus sighed again. He knew well, as did many modern humans, that nine times out of ten the skinwalkers genuinely did not know that they had no soul and were not living kind. The tenth time was the iteration humans had to be concerned about, the new gen. So aptly coined the new genesis, and by some in the far reaches they were called the Inquisition. If you truly were a dying man, you would see the signs. I see signs. The AI did not see signs. None that were real, anyway. If our roles were reversed and I was the one where you are, Atticus said, you would see buzzards circling above. You would smell the stench of rotting flesh The proximity I am to you now would be unbearable, and you would not be crouched beside me in search of parts. I am the very evidence you are not man, that you do not see signs. I am the only buzzard at your death. The screaming continued, as if it had never stopped. The same tone designed to play on human psych. And without another useless breath spent, Atticus plunged a large blade into the creature's speaker box. Still alive, Atticus flipped the skinwalker over and dissected him at the spine, spilling a small amount of oil and clear synthetic liquid as he did so. With a grunt, and a swear, Atticus ripped the part that he needed from the blood-eagled flesh suit. If you were a man, this would have never happened to you. Hey everybody, this is going to be the final episode of season one, and I thought it fitting to end the episode where season two will begin, which is more talk on AI, more talk on NPCs, more talk on this future that is coming for us, this dark future that is coming for us. And I thought, you know, what better way to do that than with my own stories that I've written What you just heard was 
my story Crusader 15, which is a story about an interdimensional traveler. And you just got a glimpse into his origin story. So um, I'm very proud of, of Crusader, and I have been working on it for years at this point. Um, it's very near and dear to my soul. Sometimes I feel like it's the reason that I'm alive. I am continually working on this story, and, um, you know, I'm getting ready to start showing people kind of um, the story of Crusader, of Atticus. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, that little excerpt. Season 2 is going to have some more storyline components to it. Um, season 1 was a great adventure and a great introduction to me and um, sort of a, a grab bag of, of things. Season 2 is going to be a little more pointed, a little more dramatic, a little more extra, just a little more pizzazz in general, and I'm really excited to go there. As you can see, my studio has been gutted. Um, these are my final moments in this room, and the next time you see me, I will be very, very, very far from here. So this episode is a little bit short, but it is my temporary farewell. I will be back very soon. In the meantime, please don't forget to like, follow, share, and subscribe. Um, if you can get some of your friends onto the 21 CD podcast, that would be amazing. Please don't forget that we are on Instagram and YouTube. If you are listening to this on a podcast somewhere, you could find us at 21 CD Podcast. If you are listening on, or if you're watching this on YouTube, please head over to the Instagram or maybe your favorite podcast platform and give us a follow there. And also, if you guys are on Spotify, please do not forget to rate the show five stars. All of this helps me monumentally. Guys, it's been a fantastic first season. I, I couldn't ask for better followers of this podcast. Um, you guys have been absolutely, I'm overwhelmingly thankful for you guys, and it has been an excellent beginning, an excellent genesis to the 21 CD podcast adventure, and I can't wait to see you in season two. So stay safe out there, stay alive, and remember, don't drink the water and question everything. Later.